Hey y'all, welcome back to another video. Um, and today I'll actually be talking about once again another Kaching build video. And basically, I just finished um my build not too long ago. So actually, if you haven't noticed, I have made a previous video talking about Kaching. And at the time, I believe it was like a month ago or so, I did still use a physical Kaching. So basically, I've decided to change that and go to an electro kitchen because honestly, I didn't like not being able to, you know, just teleport like this, or at least like in the middle of combat without messing up my damage. So basically, it was just more fun to me. That's why I switched. And wow, I've gotten amazing luck with some artifacts, and the Vestiful build is just absolutely insane. And I really did want to share this with you guys to show you how you can basically get the most out of your Kaching. Um, I know a lot of people don't have this character, but if you do, this video is for you. Trust me, if you want to build an Electro Kaching, um, I'll basically be showing all the artifacts that you need, um, everything you need to go for, basically. And also, I will be showing a showcase of the character with and without support, you know, abilities. Like, for example, I'm running um, Song Lee, um, John Ling or Jane Ling, I think her name is, and Mona. But um, basically, I'll be showing two different parts of the showcase: one um with Kaching only, and the other one without using any other characters, of course, to kind of show you guys how much of a difference it makes if you are interested in that. But um, yeah. Without further ado, let's get right into it. <laughs> Alright, so before we get started, I did actually want to apologize if my PC fan is too loud. It's been a bit ridiculous recently. I don't know if y'all can hear that. But anyway, um, let's go ahead and show her build off. So basically, um, I have leveled her up to 90. I did that a long time ago, actually. And the weapon that I did use, um, at the time, they had the Black Cliff um, weapons. Um, I don't know if they're still in there, but... um. I did pick up the longsword because basically I was wishing on Hu Tao and I got a lot of those, you know, the star glitter, like the currency, to be able to buy a weapon. So I just went ahead and went for it since I already had it and I did really want this weapon. But um, it is pretty insane. So as you can see at level 90, the base attack is 565 and has 36.8% crit damage. That is really good in my opinion if you're going for a DPS character. You almost always want to go, or at least try to get a weapon that gives you crit rate or crit damage, because that's so like good for your build, being able to basically um, not have to worry as much about crit rate or crit damage depending on what you use um, in your artifacts and more like in the weapon. So it's a lot easier to get like you know those overall like high stats with crits, but um. For her artifacts, I did go ahead and use the two-piece gladiator and two-piece thundering fury. Um, I know a lot of people use the four-piece thundering pseudo, but um, I just felt like this would be a little bit better in certain scenarios. But um, basically, let's go ahead and start with her flower right here. So um, yeah, as you can see, I did get some pretty good luck with substats. So. Um, basically what you want to go for with her artifacts for an Electro Kaching, like I said, two-piece Glad, two-piece Thundering Fury. Um, of course, the um, Flower and the Feather, you can't change what that gives you. But um, obviously, the substats were pretty good on this. I picked up Crit Rate and Crit Damage, which is really good. And on top of that, I did get Attack Percent, which is significantly better than just Flat Attack, in my opinion. But Flat Attack can also be okay. Of course, the defense, eh, whatever. <laughs> I mean, I did still get a lot of other good substats, so I can't really complain. But yeah, 21.8% crit damage, 6.6% crit rate, and 11.1% attack. And like I said, 7.3% defense, which doesn't really matter that much. But for my feather, obviously, the main, um, the main stats are always going to be attack. Um, This is where it was honestly insane. I got 6.6% crit rate and 33.4% crit damage. I was freaking out. I'm like, no way. I have to be dreaming. I did not actually get the substat. 
So I was like, oh man, it was insane. I honestly was not expecting this. While I was upgrading it, it was so awesome. But like I said, crit rate, crit damage, you know, attack percent, that's really good for Kaching. Um, you don't really need to focus on energy recharge that much since um, her ult does not cost that much. So you can kind of like, you know, use it over and over again. But um, you can get anything besides like defense. I mean, it's whatever because I still got good substats, but yeah pretty insane so for my timepiece um you should go for attack with this of course and um i got 4.5 percent energy recharge 40 elemental mastery 15.2 percent hp and that's why i did get a little bit disappointed but like i said at the same time all my other sub stats were kind of insane so i can't complain too much and then i did get a seven percent crit rate which of course you know more crit rate slash crit damage built in I mean, in your substats, that always helps. Um, try to make sure that you're getting at least a decent amount of that. And for her goblet, or the cup, whatever you like to call it, um, of course, electro damage bonus is the way to go if you want any electro ka -ching, obviously. And um, I got 8.2% attack, 9.3% HP, and 12.4% crit damage, which is really good. I feel like if you get more than 10% crit rate or crit damage, that's was like, okay, it's starting to get pretty good, you know what I'm saying? But, um, yeah, so you do want to watch out for that. And I did get flat attack, but that's okay, it's not too big video. But, um, and lastly, for my crown, or the circlet, whatever you want to call it, the helmet, um, I went for crit rate. Um, of course, it tops out at 31.1% with the main stat. And, um, I did get a lot of HP again, 15.2% HP. But I did get um, base and percent attack. So I got 30, oh God, I'm sorry, 33% attack and, um, I mean, not percent, 33 attack and 4.7% of attack, you know, the attack percent. And I did get 12.4% crit damage on top of that. And that's why I was really surprised I got crit rate as a main stat and crit damage as a sub stat. Um, I was definitely pretty excited about that. And um for a total like all together. Yeah. <laughs> wow, it is insane. 56.3% crit rate and 205.2% crit damage. And this is without, you know, any five star weapon, no constellations, none of that. I don't have any of the constellations, which shouldn't matter too much. They're not really that good in my opinion. Or constellations, um, you know, 50% um, of her attack is AOE at the beginning of um, her point with a little blink thing. I mean, that's all right, but you know, they're nothing too game breaking. This, of course, is an upgrade. You know, three and five will always be upgrades for the talents. And, um, yeah, honestly, I feel like C4 is her best constellation. That's like the only like good one I get not the only good one but I would say that is the best one but um we don't need to worry too much about our constellations I still made her insane without them as you can see and lastly for her talents yes I did crown her main attack um I guess you can call me a ka white knight but yeah I did definitely upgrade these quite a bit all the way to max with her base um talent her normal attack and for her E and her ult, I did get those to level 9. I don't want to, you know, crown all of these, all three of these. That would be a bit overkill to use three crowns on a character. But if that's what you want to do, go ahead. But just know that's pretty um, cost, you know, resource effective. But um, yeah, it is quite a bit to save to get all of this. So it did take quite a while, but fortunately, I did finish it for this video. And yeah, C is absolutely just out of this world insane. Like, it's ridiculous. So, um, okay, so I almost forgot the, um, passive, but for this sword, the Black Cliff Longsword, um, it's actually called Press the Advantage. So, basically, what happens is after defeating an opponent, your attack is increased by 12% for 30 seconds. And then this has a maximum of three stacks. So obviously you can go up to 36% and half a minute before it resets. So basically, if you're going around getting a bunch of kills, your attack is constantly going up. So that's pretty good, especially for stuff like the Spiral Abyss. If you're killing a bunch of 
slime or hilly chose or whatever some like weaker enemies are constantly like racking up that damage that can definitely be pretty good and let's go ahead and see if it's still in the shop actually okay so it is actually still in the shop for about another week if you want to pick these up all the black cliff weapons um you have of course you know the pole arm the sword the claymore the bow and the um catalyst have all of these for this 24 of these masterless star glitter if you want to go ahead and pick these up these are definitely a pretty good set of weapons my opinion so definitely don't forget about that if you do want these accents speak louder than words so let's go ahead and get on to the showcase all right so kitchen can actually be really good against ruin guards um it did end up having to move to a different part of the map because it was raining I didn't want to kind of, you know, flaw the showcase and be constantly getting electro charged, of course. So I went ahead and moved to a new location. But anyway, um, let's go ahead and take all the people off of team. He better not attack me. <laughs> but um, yeah, let's go ahead and try to dodge this real quick. All right. Go ahead and use my E, detonate. Oh, man, I wish I got a crit right there. But whenever I do hit crits, it is pretty good. Go ahead and use that again. Use my ult. Yeah, that was basically um, Kaching without even really getting that many crits. Um, so let's go ahead and try that again and see if we can get more lucky. Um, I don't want to use a, you know, any of the food that basically buffs you. Because I kind of said I will be doing this, you know, just the way that she is. And also, if you don't know, um, her ult actually gives her increased crit rate. I believe it's 15% extra crit rate for a certain amount of time. So, that does definitely help if you do want to go ahead and do that. Um, with using her ult and then basically teleporting into the enemy using her E but let's go ahead and fight this guy over here all right here he is let's go ahead and try to dodge his missiles again there we go and there we go that's the crit that we needed at the beginning let's go ahead and use the ult to dodge to get the increased crit rate go ahead and dodge that yeah it is pretty insane how much damage she can output but yeah, it is definitely pretty good. As you can see right there. Um, I do feel like Ruin Guards are kind of a strong point. Obviously, you know, other elements like Hydros is really good against because Electro Charge, like a bunch of Hydro Slimes and all of that. But um, you're obviously not going to be in like the best case scenario every time. So you don't want to like worry about that too much. Let's go ahead and use her with some support characters to see how good she can be because of them. Alright, so this is basically my favorite place to go and fight a bunch of Ruin Guards besides the other part of the map, which is like way down here, where like four of them spawn. I didn't make a mistake by already fighting them today. I don't know what I was thinking with that, but um, I'm going to go ahead and fight this guy over here with support, so let's go ahead and wait for him to get up. I do hate how long they take to get up. Um, let's go ahead and place his pillow right there. Go ahead and place another one with the shield. John Ling's ult. Get the vaporize. Use Zong Li to keep him in place real quick. Pull ult. And dead. So I didn't really get to test her out that much. Let's go ahead and try that again to see a little bit more damage you can do with her. I did kind of use my supports a little bit too much right there. Let's go ahead and try that again. Alright, let's go ahead and try to catch up this guy. Use my E. Use his Q. Go ahead and lock him in place. Um, let's go ahead and get Mona's ult real quick. We can do that. Use her ult. 17,000 with that. So that's definitely some pretty high damage you can do with supports. Um, if you don't know, Mona's ult actually um, debuffs the enemy quite a bit. It makes a lot of smaller enemies not able to move, which is definitely pretty good. Um, being able to do that with Mona and, of course, Song Li's ult 
the way I built him with his artifacts, how after using an ult it increases our party members damage, um, which is pretty good. So basically you just run around with this team and just like kill everything. But um, I know this isn't too free to play friendly, that's why the showcase that I did first was only Kaching and not like, you know, two other five stars basically. Um, because, you know, not everyone can get those people. It's had to be a little bit more free to play friendly sometimes, but yeah, she is pretty insane. Um, I do think she is a pretty underrated character in my opinion. I know she's not like the best 5 star or anything like that, but honestly I do believe if you build her right the way I did, she can be pretty insane. Um, right now I am still trying to beat the Spiral Abyss, I'm still kind of working on my second team since I put so much time into, you know, just a few characters and not, you know, 8 different people. But um, my second team I actually use um, Hu Tao as my main DPS, with my supports being Shang Yun. Um, Sing Cho, which I do have at C6, which he can be pretty good with Kaching. Maybe you can get like an Electro Charge thing going on. I know a lot of people don't really like Electro Reactions. Maybe they'll buff them in the future. But there is an alternative for some um, good Elemental Reactions you can try to use. And I do use Noel with my Hu Tao team. So basically, in the Spiral Abyss, as I was saying, she does kind of not carry me, but she is that kind of team that carries the rest of the people in the abyss he's a lot better than my second team and that's just because my Hu Tao build isn't too good I am still working on that trying to basically get her build up and everything but um yeah that basically covers everything it's pretty much all I wanted to say about Kaching. I just kind of want to show off her build a little bit um but before we end the video let's go ahead and fight just a few more enemies I know you guys are probably waiting for it. we already know who it is so let's go ahead and fight a bit of these for two. just kind of showcase that one last time because it's just so insane. But um, like I said, try to focus a lot on crit rate and crit damage. Um, that is really good with weapons as well, trying to get that build in. Um, but yeah, you'll watch me just like shred through these guys right here. 20,000 with that E. Pretty insane. So yeah, C is definitely a pretty good character in my opinion. Um, I know the Kaching Bano is obviously gone already, but if you guys do have this character and you were basically looking for um, a really good Electro Kaching build, that's basically all I have for you guys. Um, just one more time, if you guys did forget for her artifacts, of course HP and attack is locked like that. Um, with the subtask go for crit rate, crit damage, and attack percent if you can, if you get lucky. Of course it's all just RNG. But go for attack with a timepiece, electro damage bonus with a goblet, and um, crit rate or crit damage with her hat or helmet, depending on how your build is. Obviously, if you have something like a primordial jade cutter, or maybe even the black sword from the battle pass, maybe you can go for crit damage since you already have crit rate built into your weapon. You can kind of be a bit more flexible with that. Um, especially if you have the Primordial Jade Cuddle, that is, I would say, the best sword for Kaching, in my opinion. I really did wish that I did have that, but, you know, the Weapon Banner is a bit of a yikes, so I try to never wish on that. Especially being free to play is really hard to kind of save up Primo Gems. But, um, yeah, that's basically all I wanted to say. Um, if you guys are looking for an Electro Kaching build, here we go. I have been having quite a bit of fun using this character and I did want to share this with you guys and kind of show you guys a good showcase of her damage to basically show you guys, you know, she does have a really high skill gap but you can still make her really good. I know a lot of people hate on her which is totally fine but I just wanted to show you guys basically what she is capable of because I do feel like she is a bit underrated but yeah, it's enough of me rambling. Um, if you did enjoy today's video be sure to leave it a like. It really does help me um, with the YouTube algorithm, recommend my videos and all of that to some more of you guys. Um, don't forget to sub and hit the bell to get notified as soon as I upload a new video like these. If you're interested in build videos, I make those. I also make speculation slash lore videos. So I basically look into that and talk about that with you guys and just other um, controversial discussions. 
if you have looked at my channel. But um, yeah, that's basically what I cover here. If you do want to subscribe, be sure to comment down below. Um, if you do have Kaching, what build you use for? I kind of want to see um how different my build is to everyone else's. If you use maybe the four piece thundering pseudo, because that is also a good option. But um, if you don't know where to get that, before I end this video real quick, um, the domain for that, I almost forgot to show you guys, it is um, all the way up here at the Midsummer Courtyard. I almost forgot to show you guys that. But um, yeah, that's basically all I have to say, and i see you guys next video. Peace.